giant Jupiter, glorious Saturn, tilted Uranus, and distant Neptune. Join us as we follow the intrepid Voyager probes next on Amazing Space. An unlikely looking candidate for the most successful spacecraft ever. In 1977, NASA launched Voyagers 1 and 2 towards the mysterious giants of the solar system, the outer planets. Two years later, the first target filled their sights, Jupiter, with a thousand electric storms flashing in its clouds. The Voyagers found massive belts of weather unlike anything ever seen before. Tempests and turbulence. An immense hole in the cloud deck. And the dazzling red spot of Jupiter, a storm system three times the size of Earth and at least 300 years old. As Voyager approached the planet, a portrait of a colossus emerged. Circled by moons as big as planets, trailing their shadows across its immense surface. Jupiter's size overwhelms the mind and the eye. Bigger than a thousand Earths, bigger than all the other planets put together. Had Jupiter been just ten times its size, it would have been a star, our solar system a binary one. But its nuclear furnace never ignited. At its center, Jupiter may harbor a tiny solid core set in pressurized ice. But otherwise, it's a huge ball of gas, hydrogen, methane, and ammonia, rotating every 10 hours. Immense Jupiter gives off more heat than it receives from the sun. The combination of heat and spin generates astounding weather bands, circulating at different speeds and directions, and creating wonders like the red spot. It's an anti-cyclone, a monstrous area of high pressure. When seen in infrared on the right, the source of Jupiter's tempest stands out. Hot gas driven up from the interior glows red. Colder descending gas is white and pale blue. Voyager discovered that Jupiter has rings, fine powdery remains of a pulverized moon, pictured here as they would look from Jupiter's moon Ganymede. Jupiter has 16 known moons. Galileo first glimpsed the largest ones back in 1610, a shattering observation in an era when everything was supposed to circle the Earth. Voyager's pictures of Ganymede catalogued the largest moon in the solar system, bigger than Mercury or Pluto. Had Jupiter managed to become a star, Ganymede would have been a planet and a much warmer place. At minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the surface is an icy crust. Wrinkles and craters an old and unchanged topography. Beneath the crust, a mantle of slushy water riding on a rocky core. Voyager also scanned Callisto, another planet-sized moon, scarred by an ancient rain of meteors. The probe's next encounter captured an altogether different landscape. The moon Europa was as smooth as the others had been rough. 
Its surface, looking like a finely cracked eggshell, is probably a thin layer of ice covering a planet-sized ocean. If there is life to be found in the solar system, it probably resides here, in the seas of this moon. Io, the innermost of the four big moons of Jupiter, held a surprise for Voyager 1. Volcanic plumes. Caught in the act, mid-eruption, amidst a sulfurous landscape. And a white sulfur berg in a lake of liquid sulfur. Voyager 2 took a closer look, profiling the most active volcanic body in the solar system. Caught in the gravitational tug of war between Jupiter and Europa, Io erupts continuously. Its troubled surface, a crust of sulfur floating on a sulfurous ocean, is smudged with black volcanoes. Io has the only volcanoes seen in eruption other than on Earth. Their Jovian mission accomplished, the Voyagers set off on the long next leg of the journey. Another splendid giant in their sights, Saturn. Amazing Space will return on TLC. Amazing Space now continues on TLC. Of all the planets, Saturn is perhaps the most beautiful. The spectacularly haloed planet is second in size only to Jupiter, compared to Earth, a monolith. 75,000 miles across. And like Jupiter, it's a giant ball of gas. If you could find a container big enough, you could float Saturn in water. Almost 900 million miles from home, the voyagers approach the Saturnian system. First, a swing by Saturn's great moon, Titan. The pictures were let down. A haze shrouded the moon. But Voyager picked up enough data to hint at a picture of its surface. With Saturn barely visible through the haze, the view from Titan might look like this. An atmosphere rich in nitrogen, like Earth's, but denser. Lakes and seas on a moon bigger than the planet Mercury. Titan could be the Earth in deep freeze. After radioing home the Titan data, Voyager performed a course correction for Saturn. And this is what it saw on the long approach. Saturn. Its famous rings and its moons. Like its bigger cousin, Jupiter, Saturn may have a tiny solid core, but the rest is gas, mostly hydrogen, some helium. Unlike Jupiter, however, Saturn cloaks its weather beneath blurring smog. But a change in filter reveals the same frantic weather bands. Voyagers scrutinize the upper atmosphere for weather systems and track them. Top right, just discernible through the smog, a storm the size of Europe appeared. 
With a false color filter, another storm stood out, the dark spot below the yellow band. Zooming in, Voyager spotted a pair of smaller turbulences accompanying the storm. And here, a jet stream, like the gales that whip around the upper atmosphere on Earth. On Saturn, though, they blow at 900 miles per hour, faster than the speed of sound. Voyager 2 headed on to Enceladus, a tiny moon of the giant Saturn, and one of dozens. It's only 300 miles in diameter. Computers allow us to explore its icy, rocky surface. Here's the view from Mimas, another rocky snowball. Tiny also, but bearing an impact scar the size of Mount Everest. Whatever struck here nearly smashed little Mimas to pieces. Other moons of Saturn may not have been as lucky. The planet's spectacular rings probably resulted from such cosmic collisions. Their contents, lunar debris. With the help of an obliging background star, Voyager surveyed the rings. They stretched for 170,000 miles. But they were less than a mile thick, and there are thousands of them. The dark spokes revealed in these time-lapse photos may be dust levitated above the rings by Saturn's magnetic field. Voyager's pictures ended centuries of speculation. When Galileo first spotted Saturn's strange appendages in 1610, he didn't quite know what to make of them. Fifty years later, Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens speculated that they might be rings. Until Voyager, scientists thought the rings numbered six or seven. Instead, the probe found seven main bands. Each contained hundreds of rings. Seen edge on, the gaps between the main bands of rings stand out clearly. Shepherded by little moonlets, the particles in the rings range in size from specks of dust to icy rocks as large as cars. After surveying the glories of Saturn and its delicate rings, the Voyagers would part company. Voyager 1 headed up and out of the solar system. With the sun now just a distant beacon, Voyager 2 turned for Uranus. Amazing Space will return on TLC. Amazing Space now continues on TLC. Uranus, seventh planet from the sun, broods in the dark outer regions of our solar system. Its axis strangely tilted, one and three-quarter billion miles from the sun. Until 1986, we knew virtually nothing of Uranus. From Earth, this was all we could see. Then outward from Saturn came Voyager 2. Now so distant, we had to build bigger antenna here on Earth to keep in touch with it. With its twin, Voyager 1, heading away from the planets, Voyager 2 was alone during the five-year trip to Uranus. The first photos were disappointing. Filters and time-lapse photography failed to penetrate the fog. 
but the probe did detect some atmospheric turbulence. Besides the wildly tilted axis of rotation, Voyager also found an out-of-kilter magnetic field tilted 60 degrees from the spin axis. Voyager counted 11 rings and found them to be wider across than Earth. Uranus itself, another gas ball with a tiny rocky core, is the third largest planet in the solar system. And as expected, Voyager spotted unknown Uranian moons. Ten more than were known, bringing the total to 15. They are frosty little worlds, like Ariel. Umbriel, methane iced. Titania, with a canyon big enough to sever the United States from coast to coast. Titania is the largest, Oberon, the outermost. But little Miranda stole the show, smallest, innermost, and strangely grooved. A computer flight over this brave new world reveals a delightful jigsaw of geologic form. The result, perhaps, of Uranus' strong gravitational tug. Or even some cosmic collision that cracked the moon apart. Voyager also scrutinized the rings of Uranus. The probe detected 11 of them, less complex than Saturn's. They seem to be made of little dark ice blocks. The rings may be the remains of a shattered moon or an even larger cosmic collision. Uranus may have been knocked sideways by a spectacular crash with an Earth-sized body. Voyager took four more years to reach Neptune and was now 12 years from home. The view from Earth. The view from Voyager. Neptune appeared to be the twin of Uranus, a gassy sphere with a small solid core. Like Uranus, Neptune displayed a magnetic field out of sync with its rotational axis tilted some 47 degrees. The planet rotated every 16 hours. Compared to Earth, Neptune is a giant, but it's slightly smaller than neighboring Uranus. Voyager captured Neptune's weather. White strands of high-altitude cirrus clouds circle the planet. Neptune generates more heat than it absorbs. The result, hectic weather and storms like the wizard's eye. And upwards from the eye, the great dark spot hurtling around the planet every 18 hours. A tempest as big as Earth. Before Voyager, scientists thought Neptune had only partial rings, small arcs that begged investigation. They turned out to be clumps on complete rings. Neptune had two main rings and a tenuous inner ring. Its atmosphere hydrogen, helium, and a touch of methane. Methane absorbs red light, giving Neptune its bluish hue. A glimpse of the moon Nereid, previously known. And Proteus, discovered along with five others as Voyager prepared for its last mission. To Neptune's biggest moon, Triton. Voyager moving at immense speed past the moon, 
fired maneuvering jets to align for sharp photography. The probe beheld a strange world in its last solar system visit. Triton had the coldest known surface. Frozen eruptions. A wispy atmosphere of nitrogen. A retrograde orbit. And strangest of all, with its trail emphasized in black, a geyser of nitrogen. Triton probably once orbited the sun, but passing too close to Neptune, it was captured. Out here, with a sun almost three billion miles distant, Voyager's work was finished. It would leave Pluto at the solar system's edge unexplored. Seen through a telescope on Earth, Pluto is just a blur. Through the Hubble Space Telescope, it divides in two. Pluto has a moon, Charon, that's half the size of the planet. They are tiny frontier worlds that for the time being we can only guess at. Far from the paths of the Voyager probes as they plunge into the galactic depths. A job well done. The story of two nations and their struggle to abandon centuries of isolation as the modern world closed in all around them. China and Japan, part of this century, next on TLC.